Miller here at the Durham College Athletic Complex. It's a new year, 1995. We're back, and college basketball is back right here on Rogers Community 10, and we've got a dandy second half for you. All season long, we've talked about the women's and men's basketball teams here at Durham College, and we're in for a dandy second half right now. My name is Ken Babcock. I'll be bringing you today's play-by-play. -play. I'll be joined, as always, by Mr. Matt Hackler from the OCAA Central Office, and also, right now, assisting in the Operations Department and Communications Department with the Toronto Raptors. Matt, we've had a great first half, an exciting second half. This starts our second half right now here on Rogers. It's going to be an absolutely tremendous second half of basketball in the 1994-95 season. All-Star Games, we know a couple of weeks right here at Durham College. Final Four again in March at Durham College. But tonight, a super game between Humber and Durham should be a great way to start the second half. Well, it certainly is, Matt. Two teams heading in the opposite direction, heading into the first half. Humber, Humber College right now, 7-0 on a seven-game win streak. First place in the OCAA right now. The Durham Lady Lords heading in the opposite direction. A, a mini four-game losing streak right now. 2-2 two and two at one point. And now they're heading into the second half with a record of 2-5 and five in seventh place. Matt, we talk about playoff picture. They have to finish in the top six to qualify for the playoffs. Right now they sit seventh right now in the OCAA stands. We talk about action Durham Lady Lords wise. Julie Goodhouse, what, what can we say about Julie? Julie right now leading the OCAA in scoring once again. She seems like she's always at the top. And in fact, the defending OCAA scoring champion in the women's section right now. Going for the second year in a row to lead the uh, OCAA Women's League in scoring. But the key with Durham, as it has been for the last two years, who's going to be the second scorer? Who's going to be the third scorer? Important in all games, but especially important today against Humber. A team with great depth and the top defensive team in the league. Well, they certainly are one player to look for in Durham who could pick up that extra scoring slack so they don't have to rely on Julie all the time. We look at scoring depth and Colleen Sherwati has certainly come through. We look for other players such as Cindy Miller and also perhaps Heidi Brown who has rejoined the squad this year. Played last year, concentrated on her academic studies in the first half at school here at Durham College. She's back. She could lend a hand offensively as well. And Coach Rainbow needs a lot of support. If he can turn the tails and try to get their team back on a winning track for the second half. Coach Jim Henderson, proverbial first place coach with Humber, silver medalist one year ago, a tough loss to Fanshawe in that final. However, Coach Henderson has his troops back at 7-0 again this year. Jim Henderson also will be coaching the East All-Stars on January 21st right here at the OCAA Basketball All-Star Games. Ken, uh, Jim's a tremendous coach. Humber is a, a, a just a tremendous squad, a, a deep squad. We'll let, see later the statistics about this team. No superstars on the squad. Just 10, 11 great players on this team. They go let really 12 deep. Well, players to look for, obviously, on Humber. We we'll take a look at Corinne Smith, the veteran guard returning. Their top scorer is really 10th in the league. We'll take a look at the leading scorers later. Let's take a look right now at the OCAA standings currently in Division I women's basketball, Matt. Like, as you mentioned, Ken Humber right at the top there, 7-0, no surprise, a great team, and looking to go all the way, Fanshawe defending OCAA, gold medalist, lost some key players, but they're still strong, Mohawk, a much improved team at 5-1. Niagara and George and Brown also improved. As we see down there towards the bottom, Durham a disappointing 2-5. and five. Yes, You mentioned Coach Rainbow can't be too happy with that. Cer but certainly, Matt. Sorry, you see the teams here. they got to make up ground here. Durham has to pick up on Seneca and George Brown. Two key matchups in the second half right now. They'll be playing those te teams later on in the year. Those are the key games for Durham to get those final spot for the playoffs. As we mentioned before, Julie Goodhouse leading the OCAA in scoring once again. We'll take a, take a look at the leading scorers in a moment here. We see Goodhouse at top with 19.4 points per game. Becky Huntley another outstanding player from Fanshawe in her second year at the, the London campus and a new team back in the college division one circuit and that's Cindy Tyndall of St. Lawrence College at 15.8 and down the list but we see Durham has Julie Goodhouse's output they need to see more output from two or three more players on the Durham Lady Lords bench we'll see what happens today's action here Matt and your final comments before we head to tip off while we're still looking the scoring leaders have significance no players from Humber on there as I talked before very deep team no superstars they're 7-0 though it's going to be a good game if uh, Durham can get those other players after Julie to match up with the Humber squad for Humber five players in double digits averaging we take a look at the Durham Lady Lords starting lineup it'll be Cherwadi Miller, Thompson, Wayne, and of course, Julie Goodhouse, Coach Rainbow, and his troops ready to go. We'll be back with the opening tip-off of the second half of the 1995 OCAA women's basketball season on Rogers Community 10. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our program are greatly appreciated. 
If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. OCAA basketball season, we're back moments away from tip-off. Tonight's referees for the OCAA matchup, Mr. Dino Azano and Mr. Dave Cutler. We take a look at the Lady Lords bench here, getting ready for this OCAA tilt to start the second half, Matt, of the OCAA women's basketball season. We, we talked about in the opening of the show how this is a key game for Durham. No, they're playing the top team here, but they've got to really get their game focused and really improve in a number of areas, especially looking after the ball. Humber's a team that likes to press the ball, and Durham's really got to take, keep good possession of that and avoid turnovers. Play smart ball, and they should be able to stay in this game. We take a look now at the starters for Humber. to be Christine Weber, Janetta Paris, Jessica Boyle, Corinne Smith, and Kim Poulan to start for the Humber uh, Hawks here. We notice, too, as well in the OCAA season, Navy and gold uniforms now, Matt. Traditional maroon and gold of the Humber Hawks now out. Navy blue and gold, the Michigan Wolverines uniforms in Humber making the transition. Perhaps made popular by the success of the NCAA Wolverines, but uh, Humber showing their own success here with those colors. 7-0 to start the season. Let's see what happens. And the ball goes up there. Tip one handily there by Humber. It'll go to bounds. And it'll be Durham ball to start. Full court pressure right off the top here by the Humber Hawks here. Here's Heidi Wayne to inbounds. Chirwadi will take it. Full court pressure here by the Hawks. Stolen away. That was number 12. Taking the ball away, Kim Poulin, but she stepped out of bounds. It'll be Durham ball. Humber with that press, as we mentioned, with, as we talked about the key to this game, how Durham handles the press. Here's Chirwadi at the top. Sees Goodhouse for a moment. Takes it to the lane. Can't find it. Wayne, turnaround jumper. It's good for two. And Heidi Wayne breaks the ice here in the opening minutes of this basketball contest. Heidi Wayne for two. And the Lady Lords lead by two. Good penetration move by Chirwadi. Goodhouse acting as a decoy in case in that situation. Heidi Wayne with a good jump shot. Jessica Boyle certainly not afraid to shoot there. Tried to look inside. Hit her teammate. Janetta Paris, one of the top scorers in the league. Here comes Chawadi, sees Goodhouse, flash, turnaround, jumper, it goes again, Durham on fire in the middle. Julie Goodhouse hits for two. She's averaging 19.4 points a game. That's her first bucket tonight. We just mentioned that we had an excellent angle on that last defensive play by Durham. Goodhouse just got a finger on that to deflect the ball and create the steal. There's Paris, two from the top of the key. It goes, number 40, Janetta Paris, two-point game. Here's Miller, pressure still there, full court. Look for Goodhouse in the middle. They try the middle, which what is really what you need there to break the press, but a little too high in the pass. And on that particular sequence, there's just too many players in the same area. Should have someone breaking long and staying wide. Weber left side. Jessica Boyle not afraid to shoot three. That time it goes three for Jessica Boyle. And quickly, it's a one-point Hawks lead. That's a much better way to break the press right there with Goodhouse in the middle, as you mentioned, Ken. Passing out on the side to number 20, Miller. She has the ball now. There's Miller to Thompson, the Henry Street grad. Miller again on the left side now. Wayne, turnaround jumper. Can't get it to go. They battle for it. And they come the Humber Hawks here. Humber wearing the dark navy uniforms. Durham in their traditional home goal. And an offensive foul there against Janetta Paris. Paris called the charge. First foul of this game. A good pace to this game. But we saw number 10, Carleen Chirwadi, making a strong defensive play. Gutsy move. A lot of people don't like to do that. But step in front and draw the charge. There's Goodhouse slowing it down, waiting for a troop to set up here. Guarded closely, stolen from behind there. Nifty move there by number 42, Christine Weber. They run the court, Shawadi there to take charge for the Lady Lords. Again, tough D, tough D again by Weber. Gets in and checks it away. 21 on the shot clock here. We play just under three minutes of the first half, 17.42 remaining in the first half. You're watching OCAA Women's College Basketball action from the Durham College Athletic Complex on Rogers Community 10. Chawadi again, 15 on the shot clock now. There's Chawadi again, jump foul there. That one's gonna go against Weber. Weber picks up her first, will be the team's second. A little too close there, Weber playing aggressive D and she got caught on that one. 
What we've seen so far in this first half, first two and a half minutes or so, is when Durham has been able to handle the press. They've had good offensive opportunities, given the four points. When they've turned the ball over, it's resulted in Humber's five points. There's Thompson. Aaron pass there, right into the hands of uh, Janetta Paris. I just didn't see her there. It'll stay Durham ball, 22 in the shot clock. Thompson to inbounds. Tip, they battle for it there. Weber headmans it down the court. Poulin pulls up there, tries to get it to Paris, and goes off a teammate there. In fact, the direction rather was trying to do a 10 pass to Corinne Smith. And that goes out of bounds. It'll be Humber Ball, 24 in the shot clock. Return pass there. Paris turn around. Baby hook goes for two. Paris now has four in the game, and it's a three-point Humber lead. It's a nice little jump hook shot by Paris. That's not what Coach Rainbow wants to break the press there. It has to be broken by passes. Fortunately, Durham comes up with the ball here. Or do they? And in fact, they don't. In fact, it's a traveling violation against Durham, and it'll go over to Humber. But we don't want to see the ball being brought up the court one on four. We want to see the ball passed up the court. That's what they need to do to be effective to beat this press. The one play we saw where Durham broke it just in textbook fashion and resulted in their second bucket of the game. And when that happens again, we'll point out just to see the way to break it. A steal again. Well, that's a double team there. Poulin this time the benefactor. She takes it in nicely, lays it in. Left hand. And it's a five-point upper lead. Shawati just didn't have any help on that time. And a steal again by Weber. Steal again here. I can see a timeout brewing at the Durham Lady Lords bench. Coach Rainbow looking for his team to settle down a little bit under their own basket try to control the ball. However, they come away here, fortunately, but three giveaways in their own end. Just isn't what Coach Rainbow wants to see in the early going. Durham has had a number of turnovers, as he pointed out, Ken, but they're still only trailing by five points, nine to four. We talked about when they do handle the press, you can usually live by the press, you can die by the press, and if Durham's able to break this press efficiently in this game, they'll certainly be right in it, to right to the end. The question. Yeah, breaking the action here, referee Dave Cutler coming over to the bench. A little conversation here, Coach Cutler explaining it to Coach Rainbow, and I'm sure in a moment to Coach Henderson. some problem right now with the mechanism now they're going to take a look at the Durham College athletic staff taking a look at it right now Mike Duggan uh, seems to be a problem with the counting system on the clock we're going to take a short break here we are watching the OCAA college basketball opening second half action of the 1994-95 basketball season on Rogers Community 10 we'll be back shortly If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. And we're back here at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Just a short break here while we take a look at the clock mechanism. It was a 30-second shot clock, and just a problem with the mechanism sticking. Uh, that has been rectified. We'll keep an eye on that as the game goes on, and uh, 
We'll see how it processes, uh, I guess, as far as the 30-second shot clock goes. We have another game today. Today's doubleheader, so we'll monitor that. The ball's in play now. And away we go, Colleen Chirwadi with the ball. 9-4, Humber leads. That errant pass there. Save there, 21 in the shot clock. 16-10 remaining in the first half. Chirwadi had an excellent save on there to keep the ball in possession for Durham. Down to about 12 seconds on the shot clock. Let's see what they do. And that's up there, no shots for the Lady Lords. The ball comes back down court. Humber with a fresh uh, unit of players in there. Number 11, Lisa Saran. That off the mark there. Wayne hustles, trying to save it on the end line. Wendy Elderberg couldn't quite do it. It'll be Durham ball. Heidi Wayne inbounds. As I mentioned, Ken, a whole bunch of new players. Jackie Dore, number 31, and Heather Kerr, number 41, also in for Humber Ball. As we talked earlier about what a deep squad they are, we'll see if they are, all the players can keep me. They turn the ball over there. Thompson, as I mentioned there, turns the ball. Thompson gave up on the ball as it goes out of bounds. It'll be Humber Ball once again. And Durham really has to dig down deep here to stay in this ball game early. They had a good start, 4-0. Let's see what they can do now. Turn around, jumper off the iron, doesn't go there for Deb Henry. Durham ball again, they have to start working the ball inside. And one thing, they have to make sure their press break here. They've worked on it often, they've worked on it in detail. They have to really make sure. And costly error there. Kalinda Thompson forgetting where she was on the court. Over and back violation. And it'll be Humber ball again. There we go. Three three possessions now, no shots. Durham has to tighten up a little bit. That was a good pass by Chirardi, the right idea. Kalinda Thompson just made a, a mental mistake there of catching the ball on the offensive side and bringing it back to the defensive side. Alderberg off the glass. He didn't call it, but it counts for two. An 11 4 lead. It's a seven point Humber lead here. 14 58 remaining in the first half. That's a better press break. Not ideal, but they used the pass, they used the, the whole court, and they got the ball across cleanly. And now they have to set up in their half-court offense. Good house, turnaround jumper, didn't square up at all, let it fly at three quarters. Turner seems to square up on that. And away comes Humber once again, it's a three on two as Miller tries to help out. Aldebert baseline, and it's a blocking foul there. They're gonna go against Colleen Sherwati. That'll be her first. And uh, correction, that's Trawadi's second. And at the line for Humber, number 54, Wendy Aldebert. And she'll be shooting one and one here. In fact, looks like what the referees have called, an usual call here, they call two shots in the play. She certainly didn't have an opportunity to get the ball away, but Aldebert, two shots, here comes the second, she missed the first. I think that's what they're calling. She gets to the line more than anyone on this team, 25 times to the line. Yeah. One, for two. one for two there, Aldebert hits one of two. 12-4, eight point lead, Humber's largest lead of the game. Telegraph there by Wayne. Here comes Trawadi, right side, 20 on the shot clock. Inside Goodhouse, turnaround jumper. There's a block there, they gave her the shot the other way. That looked like the uh, dental could call at the opposite end. However, Goodhouse draws a foul, Durham ball on the end. At this point, we can't basket, does not count. They try to get the ball and bounce to Goodhouse again. They just can't get inside there. Nice pass there, Thompson, Wayne. Wayne goes up, she draws a foul. Heidi Wayne will go to the line to shoot too. Looked like Henry had a block there on the shot by Wayne, but uh, got a bit of the body. 12-4, Humber leads. Let's see if Wayne can cut into this lead. Makes the first one to lead the lead. Heidi Wayne, a very good free throw shooter, about 68%, 70%. One for two, Goodhouse with a strong rebound. Goodhouse, turnaround jumper, she gets it to go. They get the bonus bucket off the missed foul. One and two from Wayne. Goodhouse replies with a bucket, gets Durham right back into the game. That's a three-point play the hard way. I wonder if they practice that. There's Oliver, strong to the hoop, nothing there. Excellent defense underneath by Goodhouse and Wayne. Goodhouse battles and rips it down. I think we can see why Oliver goes to the line so frequently. That first step and the aggressive play to the basket. Well, as you mentioned, strong rebound by Goodhouse. Durham back with possession. Chance to cut this down to three points. 19 in the shot clock here. Here's Thompson. 
Nice pass inside. Good house. Turn around. Jumper off the iron. Wayne right there. Outstanding game. She's had on the boards. Heidi Wayne. She's going to go to the line to shoot two again. Second time to the line. Heidi Wayne's been very aggressive, asserting herself down there. As Julia Goodhouse steps out for the outside shots, Wayne comes in. And at the top of the uh, program, can we mention how we need a second player, a third player for Durham to come in? Heidi Wayne's making a statement saying she wants to be that player. Certainly showing it right now, early going, dominating the offensive boards. She hits the first, she's two of three tonight on the game from the free throw line. 13-37 remaining first half. You're watching OCAA College Basketball Action on Rogers Community 10. That one off the mark there, two for four. Here come the Humber Hawks once again. Serene, nice headman pass to Alderberg who lays it in for two. Alderberg now with five points on the game. We see her coming back down court. Here's Goodhouse. They're using a slightly different strategy the last couple times to break the press, and it's been effective, perhaps because Humber's not expecting it. We we'll see if Humber can adjust, but Durham's doing a good job the last couple minutes. Here's Miller, 13 in the shot clock. Sherwadi this time beats her man. Nice pass. Miller, jump shot. And gets it a stick. Excellent passing play between Miller to Cherwadi. Back to Miller for two. Well, that's our, basically a no-look pass from Colleen Cherwadi. Beat her man and whipped it off to the side without even looking. Nice bucket. 14-10. Close game. Henry. Outside again. Alderberg. Just off the mark out the iron on a three-point raise. Trawani's going to draw the foul there. She picks it up there on a loose ball foul. Fouls on Trawani now. The only two on the team. We take a look at the foul situation. Humber definitely in foul trouble early here with 12:40 remaining in the first half. They have six fouls already, and Durham with just two. That's going to go for three. Lisa Seren there hits three. 17-10, a seven-point Humber lead. A nice job of breaking the press. See that how they used the whole court and then passed it up the side where there's a lot of space. There's Trawati. Nice pass inside. Found Goodhouse. Nicely done. Trawati certainly finding her way through, threading the needle with those passes. Goodhouse hammer. She'll go to the line for two shots and wholesale substitutions here for the Humber Hawks. Humber now with 16 fouls, but as you can see, five players on, five players off. Foul trouble, usually not a concern for head coach Jim Henderson and the Humber Hawks. They've got so many players here, so many good players, and individual foul trouble is not a concern. There's good us at the line for two, 12-17 remaining first half. Heidi Brown's now checked into the game, number five for Durham as well. Substitutions for Humber. See back into the game, Corinne Smith, Jessica Boyle, number 23 and 24, respectively. Also number 12, Kim Poole in their point guard, and Janetta Paris. Take a look at Goodhouse here in her second year, Human Resources at Durham College of Smith Falls, Ontario native. Goodhouse now with five points, Heidi Wayne with four. There's the two strengths so far for Durham. They trail 17-11 just over 12 minutes to go. As we talked about in the pregame show, we talked about needing someone to hit the score sheet. Heidi Wayne certainly must have been listening to us to pick up the slack a little bit. But not only that, Miller hitting the score sheet. Brown now into the game. Thompson effective offensively. The Lady Lords need to get that kind of output. And defensively right there, Colleen Chirwadi made the steal, hustled, dove onto the floor and forced a bad pass. And once again, Durham broke the press very effectively with the long pass. There's Wayne. Good host posts up. Pass a little high there for Miller, but that's all right. Chirwadi has it. Here's Wayne again. One-on-one. -on -one. Beats her man. Paris with a nice move. A little contact there. No call. And away come the Hawks. Blocked by Smith. And she'll say it's a clean block. Can't get it to go there. Miller had a piece of it. Smith's right back up. Paris battles. That'll go out of bounds. It'll be Durham ball. 17-11. The Hawks lead Durham here. 11-30 remaining first half. On that last sequence, there are four Durham rebounders right under the basket. That's good if the ball's there, but in that instance, the ball bounced away further, and they're lucky to get the ball. Here's Shruwadi, guarded closely by Poulin. Miller sees Wayne wide open. Look for the jumper. Not afraid to shoot. Nice try inside. Brown was there. Didn't release in time. And obviously, Heidi Brown, we talk about Heidi Brown rejoining the team. And the opening going, number five, that's Heidi Brown, concentrating on her academic studies. She played last year, returns this year's second half to bolster the team. Block there, Miller with a piece there, and Wayne comes up with the ball. 
We've seen some strong contributions from players like Miller, Heidi Wayne. We may not have expected, but that's what we talked at the top of the broadcast. Durham needs all kinds of balance on this team to put, keep them in the game. Shawnee, nice penetration there. She's getting the job done, beating her man, drawing some extra help defending-wise, and allowing to you know, actually free someone up. That time it was Wayne with the pass, just a little too out front, and it goes out of bounds. Here comes Poulan. Durham sets up their defense here. They're in one 2-2 two, two zone right now. We see them in Shawati challenging the top against Corinne Smith. Interesting that we have Julie Goodhouse at the top of the zone, top rebound of the team, and, and biggest and strongest player. Usually they'd be down low, but she had at the top. That shot off the mark. Nice outlet by Trawati. Here's Goodhouse. One on three. Wisely pulls it up here. Waits for her mates and gives it back to their point guard, Colleen Trawati. Good plays by Trawati and Goodhouse. As you mentioned, very wisely pulled that up. Didn't try to make the forced attempt. There's Goodhouse. Nice rebound. Looks to take it back up. And does. And we got a blocking foul there. And Goodhouse is going to go to the line for two. Just surrounded on that time by three Humber Hawks defenders. And as good and strong as big as he is, no choice but to foul her. Goodhouse will be going to the line for the second time in this game. You see why Julie Goodhouse been to the line 58 times so far this lead, uh, so far this season. That's the most in the league. And one of the reasons why she's a leading scorer at over 19 points a game. Goodhouse taking time out here. We're set to go here. Dino Azano checking at the scoreboard just to make sure everything's okay with the 30-second shot clock. He's going to confer with referee Dave Cutler right now. A little huddle here with the Lady Lords. You're watching OCAA Women's College Basketball action on Rogers Community 10. We're going to take a look a little bit later on at the history of the Durham Lady Lords and uh, Humber Hawks as far as that goes, and also around the league results. The latest OCAA scores prior to Christmas and in the new year. As you mentioned again, the games that we're going to look at shortly are prior to Christmas. This is the first game in the entire league in the uh, second half of the season in January 95. And it's a strong first half for Humber, 7-0 fans also up there. So this is the point of the year, and Durham's played a good game so far, halfway through this first half, only down by six. We know that Humber is capable of blowing teams out. Doesn't look like they're going to do that tonight. Well, let's take a look right now at the uh, score clock. They're still trying to formulate the 30-second shot clock. There's going to be a little, little difficulty with that right now. And we got a break here. We're going to be back in a moment on this OCAA broadcast from Rogers Community 10. We'll take time out. We'll see you back in a moment. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. We're back here, and right now a six-point lead for the Humber Hawks. 10.05 remaining. They've got everything straightened out right now. Goodhouse at the line here. She's been at the line twice. Yeah, the first one goes there. Goodhouse now two of three on the line. And she looks to cut the lead here, and she does. Three of four from the line for Goodhouse. Now she has seven points in the game, and it's a four-point Humber lead. Durham creeping back into this one. That's right, and the key is we've talked about the last four or five minutes or so. They've been breaking the press effectively. They haven't been turning the ball over. Boyle this time, nice pass there to Paris. Frees her up on the baseline. She hits for two. Janetta Paris with six points in the game. That was a nice first step by Paris, and a nice, again, jump hook. Leads the team with six points. Shawati Miller at the top now. Here's Wayne, had a chance. Tries to go inside, Aaron pass here. Not a good pass from uh, Heidi Wayne, however. No damage there. Wayne, what a job she's done offensively. Wayne, inside, outside, a great job of the boards. And that's what Coach Rebo really wanted to see. Heidi Wayne, she's been through the first half now, a little more experience in the league. And I think she's starting to show what she can uh, contribute to Coach Rebo's squad. And she's contributing down low, where Julie is usually is the only player down there. And teams like Humber can really focus on that. When Heidi Wayne is on her game, like, as she is today, with this offensive defensive strength that's big help to the team. Good break there, nicely done there. That's number 12, Kim Poland laying in. She has four in the game. And it's an eight point Humber lead. A quick series of turnovers there. Miller made a nice play to step in front. 
Smith steps in front of Goodhouse Sarah Cotton moving back. Still through her ball, however. Double team on Miller. Let's see how she does it. She steps through it. Good Having job a foul there. there. She did step through. Excellent play by Miller to draw the foul. That'll go against Poulin. On a, on a play like that with your double team, if you wait too long, you're not going to be able to step through. Miller did the very smart thing. Just as she stepped in there and was able to get through when the player was moving. And we now have Hummer nine team fouls. Durham will be in the bonus situation for the rest of the half. Bonus situation there. She hits the first. Miller now three points in the game. She'll look to add another here to cut into the lead. And uh, next foul for Humber, it'll be two shots for the bonus line. Now it goes. Miller's good on both. Durham really icing the uh, score sheet right now as far as free throws go. Right now, 7 for 10 from the line, shooting at 70%. That's excellent. They're normally about a 53% shooting team. They boosted that up, and that's what's going to keep them in this game. Traveling call. Uh, Turnover there, man. As you mentioned, their momentum, a key part of any swing in a basketball contest. Durham needs that right now. They trail by 6. Here's Miller. Rest break almost worked there. Wayne couldn't quite get it to Goodhouse. And away comes Trawada here. A bit of a break there. We'll see it two on one. Here's Brown. Tries to get it to Goodhouse. Tipped away by Smith. Opportunity there. Two on one. Couldn't yeah. quite pull the trigger, but Goodhouse sets it up. A good solid pass. It would have resulted in a layup, but uh, still Durham maintains possession and didn't turn the ball over. And away come Humber here again. Three and three. Back on D. Trawada gets a piece of it. Brown's also there as Wayne guards closely on the baseline. And on all that is happening, though, below the basket, number 24, Jessica Boyle, left wide open on the baseline and hits for two. Now we got a timeout on the floor. Coach Rainbow calling a timeout here. They're watching OCAA College Women's Basketball action on Rogers Community 10, 23 15 to score an eight point number lead. 8 10 remaining in the first half. We'll be back in a moment. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. Coach Rainbow here, weathering the storm as Team 2-2 two and two on the season, moving to 2-5 and five now in a four-game uh, losing streak. Looking right now, they're pretty happy with the early going here. A four-point early uh, run for the Lady Lords to take the lead for nothing. They've stayed in the ball game in an eight-point deficit right now against Humber College, who are ranked number seven in the country right now. There's no doubt that Humber's a strong team and the favorite throughout the season, the OCAA. If we had a closer look at that, I'm sure we would have seen Coach Rainbow diagramming plays for breaking the press. We talked at the top of the program, that's the key. And when Durham has broken the press effectively, they stayed even with Humber. When they've had a lot of turnovers, that's when they fall behind. Coach Henderson certainly going over the same. Likes, likes what his team's doing, aggressive, jumping up in front and taking advantage and being aggressive and, and trying to steal the ball on their press. That, that's the goal, to try to create turnovers and jumping up in a jump trap and trying to double team. Let's see what Durham can do here after that shot talk. Pass comes back to the inbounder and back once again. Look at that nice swing job to bring the ball across. Nice you done. Exactly, Matt, as you mentioned, exactly what they want to do. Chawadi here, guarded closely by number 42, Christine Weber. Goodhouse wide open for two, and that's the kind of shot she needs to hit. Goodhouse for two. She now has nine points on the game. One thing I've noticed so far, Ken, about uh, Julie Goodhouse in this game, she's playing more outside. She's for forcing the uh, Humber strategy to be a little different defensively, because maybe that's because Heidi Wayne's playing a strong game inside. Aldenberg left alone. Here's Goodhouse ripping the boards down. And and away comes Chirwadi now. 7.36 remaining first half. It's a six-point Humber lead. Chirwadi goes down hard there. Miller with the ball. Miller picked up the ball too quickly. Still Durham ball there. In this situation. On the sideline. Sorry, Matt, there on the sideline there. It'll still be Durham ball. Chirwadi took a tough, tough fall right that's there. Right. She's been to the floor a couple times already in this game, but that's actually, as we've seen many times throughout the season, that's the nature of her game. Aggressive and going to the floor for these balls. Plays hard, battling a cold in the first half. She's managed to put that behind her. Brown that time blocked heavily there by number 
41, Heather Curran. A super job. Heidi Brown did a good first step there, but Curran had the good position and blocked it. Humber coming back on the fast break opportunity. There's Oliver left wide open. Just off the mark there. She'll try to get Shawati back on her this time. They swing at Curran this time. Weber. Turnaround jumper. Just a piece there. Partially blocked might have been by Brown. I think it was. Good, bl good block by Brown. They swing it again. The shot clock's running down here. And unfortunately, we got a foul call. A tough foul there with just three seconds of the shot clock. And it'll stay Humber ball, fresh 30, 6.44 remaining first down. But since Durham is not in foul trouble, that's only their third team foul. Good defensive effort, but no, no opportunity to go for the line and get at extra points. Three-point raise there. This one goes. That's Lisa Surrett for three, her second of the game. And Surrett deadly from three-point range. She hits two. Shawati called for a traveling. I think this time out right now, just uh, a week's time, January 21st. And uh, you're watching OCAA College Action now. On uh, January 21st, the 1995 Men's and Women's OCAA Geo Basketball All-Star Games right here at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Tickets are going quickly. Only limited tickets remain. We sold out one year ago. It's going to be a dandy as the top college basketball players across the province join up in an east-west format to decide who is the best east or west in the OCAA. Of course, that, that whole... It's not just basketball games. We've got a mascot competition. And someone, as you know, Ken, is going to win a brand new Geo Tracker that night right here in the gym. Well, it's not going to be us. Unfortunately, we've well, no. away with the new keys of the uh, brand new 95 Tracker. But one lucky fan will, as well, will also have the OCAA Coca-Cola Spalding sponsor three-point shootout championship for both women's and men's and halftimes of both of those games. What an entertaining evening. College All-Star action right here at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Ken, as you remember, I'm sure the OCAA, the uh, hotshot three-point shooting champion from the women's play last year is in the gym tonight. Do you remember who it was? Julie Goodhouse. That's right. Not normally a three-point shooter, but she certainly turned it on during that shooting competition. Uh, who can forget Julie? 11 consecutive three-pointers in a row to sail to the championship. And also the men's competition, Rick Sinclair of Niagara College, not defending his championships. He's graduated now from Niagara and moved on. And we'll have a whole slew of eager people looking to take his crown, including Rafer Perry of the Durham Lords, who led up the OCAA not only last year, but this year as well, and holds the OCAA men's single game record with seven three-pointers in one game. He'll be in the contest. Look for an exciting contest as well for the men's three-point shootout championship. In the last sequence, we saw an unfortunate development for Durham. Colleen Chirwadi picked up her third personal foul. Of course, in OCAA play five and yard of the game with six minutes to go in the first half. She's already collected three. Well, we're head there. Taken away. Aldebert, they got a two-on-one. Nice pass there. Just inside. Weber will finish it off for two. That was a beautiful pass by Aldebert. Went one way. Nice bounce pass. Just the right pass to get the bucket. There's Goodhouse. Thompson saw here. Two-on-one. Looks to dish it off, goes for the shot, can't get it to go off the iron. And it'll go to bounds, it'll stay Humber ball, 544 remaining. In the last couple of minutes, we've seen once again Durham had too many turnovers in what was once a four or six point game a couple of minutes ago. It's now a 13 point game. Humber leads 30 to 17. 538 remaining here from the Durham College Athletic Complex. We take a look at Humber last year, silver medalist in the OCAA. They made it to the Final Four. They came away from the championship final, a 73-58 loser to Fanshawe, who went on to the Nationals. Coming off the Christmas break as well, Humber a hot off a third place finish at the very tough and talented Scout Classic hosted by Seneca College. We got a timeout on the floor here. It's a timeout for Durham, their second. Coach Rainbow taking timeout here with 5.24 remaining. In the first half, you're watching Rogers Community 10 coverage of OCAA College Basketball. We'll be back in a moment. second half teams have been in tournament play but we take a look around the OCAA here Matt. These are some of the uh, actions you mentioned prior to Christmas Mohawk versus Durham. Uh, Durham had a tough sled in the, in the second half excuse me in the first half a lot of games on the road 
we see that powerful Humber squad right there, 100 to 27 over Niagara. Niagara's a good team. And they've got a record of four and two actually, and Humber just destroyed them on that night. George Brown and Seneca, two teams fairly evenly matched, and you can see just a three-point game here as we get back to action. Back to action here. We're approaching the five-minute mark remaining. Here's Brown. Dishes the good out. She'll take it up. What a big block from behind by number 41 of Humber, Heather Kerner. Second block of the game, and a big block there. That's Coming a second, nowhere. second time she had a great block like that. Julie Goodhouse was expecting an easy layup, but Heather Kerner said, no, not here. You see why one of the top defensive teams in the league is on the top. Uh, this time, Goodhouse not to be determined to be denied. That time takes it right back at Curran, and Curran picks up the foul there. Little duel here, perhaps, going on between some of the two uh, bigger and stronger players in the, in the league. Julie Goodhouse uh, won that last battle. There are now 10 team fouls on Humber, so every foul for the rest of the half called on Humber will result in two free throws. Goodhouse with the first opportunity here to make two. And Goodhouse hits the first here. Four or five of the night, 80% from the line here. Goodhouse looking to cut back into this Humber lead. And a two for two. Goodhouse hits both. She now has 11 points in the game, double digits. She's averaging 19.4 points per game and leading the OCAA Division I women's circuit in scoring. I suspect she might be practicing her free throws over the Christmas holidays because she has nice form and every shot is, except for one is going down just smooth. Uh, great help defense there. Heidi Brown jumping up there to seal it off. Off the mark. Brown battles with Curran. It's going to stay up her ball, however. An excellent seal by Heidi Brown on that play. Good job on the defensive board. If you can't get it, at least make sure that the other team doesn't get it for an easy layup. An easy put back. Three-point attempt well beyond the three-point line, and that's Christine Humber for three. And she hits the bucket there. She now has five points on the game, and it restores a 14-point Humber lead. We talked before about the Humber depth, and at this point in the game, they already have six players on the scoreboard, and all of them have at least four or five points. Goodhouse turn around there. Contact not quite what Goodhouse had expected, just off the mark. Back come the Hawks. They swing it opposite side and move the ball so well. The Hawks, of course, very disciplined under head coach Jim Henderson, assistant coaches Brenna McKenzie and Denise Murray. That foul is going to go against Chirwadi, not with Coach Rainbow on it. That's Chirwadi's fourth. That, that's just a critical blow for her here. Four fouls on Chirwadi. And we really. Uh, I think the Durham players here thought it was a shooting. They were standing, looked like they were ready to line up. When in fact, there was a. Shot. Interesting call there. They've certainly been uh, a little bit hard on Chawadi, if I might add. In the early going, 16 minutes in, she's picked up four fouls. And uh, really important to Durham's attack at the point card. We're going to have to see who can pick up the slack right now and fill her shoes. Well, there's no doubt she's sitting for the rest of the half. Just as you mentioned, Ken, see who's, as you mentioned, see who's going to handle, do the ball handling chores, which the greatest strength is hustling on defense, penetration on offense, who's going to pick up the slack. A little misconfusion here. Coach Cutler trying to straighten things out here. A little confusion there. They signal the jump ball to go Durham's arrow. Using the arrow up for the Lady Lords. And the Heidi Wayne inbounds. Let's see how they break, break the press without Chawadi in there. Heidi Wayne in the center. Comes into the middle and a bad pass. Uh, nicely Curran. read, Matt, as you mentioned. Not a great pass there. Current read it nicely. Durham gets it back, though. Here's Goodhouse. 3.30 remaining first half. There's a break here. Man caught out of position. Brown takes it up. And lays it in. Heidi Brown with her first bucket. Heidi showing no signs of missing the first half. To concentrate on her studies, Brown right off the mark. Two outstanding defensive plays and now hits the score sheet with her first bucket. Brown not only the first points of the game, but of course, first points of the season, as you mentioned, joining the team after Christmas. Ah, Goodhouse going to be called there for a block. Just got her with the knee. She went by. And again, we got wholesale changes here for Humber back into the game. Dore. Paris. Paris going to hang on right now because her substitution, number 54, Wendy Elbert, is in the line. Poulant's back in, as is number 24, Jessica Boyle. So we've got Goodhouse with two fouls, Chirwati with four fouls. These are, you know, problems that we're going to see for the rest of the game here for Durham. Trailing by 14 now, it's just over three minutes to go. Alderbert at the line, and Alderbert has now five points, one for three thus far from the line in today's game. As we talked about her strength in going to the, the free throw line, 
Now one for four. She gets does a good job getting there, but not a good job when she gets there. Tipped away there. Smith uh, deliberately hitting it back, knowing her point guard would be there. And that was Poulin. Inside, Quinn Smith again goes for the J. Doesn't go. Wayne with a rebound. She's been so strong on the boards, both offensively and defensively. Heidi Wayne. And we see Thompson and Miller are going to handle the point guard duties together here with Chirati on the bench. This here, nice pass inside. Smith signaled for the foul there, no doubt about that one. You can hear that one all the way from here. 2.43 remaining, and Durham will go to the line here to shoot two in bonus. As well, Janetta Paris checking back into the game, number 40. Into the game for the first time for Durham, number 23, Jackie Green. Coach Ernie Rainbow is going to have to go a little deeper in his bench for the rest of this half and perhaps into the second half as well. There's Goodhouse again now, solid from the line here in the first half. She now has 12 points. Six of seven from the line. They had a violation there on the line. It'll go over to Humber. 13 point lead, 2.43 remaining. Coach Rainbow looking like nothing more than see his uh, troops pick up a couple quick baskets here heading into the halftime. I think what the goal for Durham and uh, Coach Rainbow has mentioned, Kendall, a couple quick baskets, keep this under 10, single digits going to halftime. I think he'll be pleased. Nice pass there. They got to chase it down and save the back over. Nice ball handling by Poulin. A little too nice there, as we mentioned. And she's called for the travel. She smiles about that and goes over to Durham here, approaching the two-minute mark. She realized she took an extra step. And we'll see how Durham breaks the press. Jackie Green does a good job bringing it up to Goodhouse. There's Goodhouse here. Green seeing her first action of the game, checking in here. Durham lucky on that case. You can see Heidi Bryant did a good job of calling for the ball, but when that ball comes into her, she has to step forward to it to prevent the Humber players from stealing the ball. That's happened a couple times, and sometimes it results in fouls, but sometimes it's resulted in turnovers. Green inbounding the ball. Goodhouse has it down low. Fouled once again. Goodhouse will be going to the line. Goodhouse spending all the first half at the line here. She's been solid from the line. Six of eight total. Back in the game, quick substitution, just a quick breather. Heather Kern back in, and out comes Corinne Smith. Smith has two uh, personal fouls. We know they're in the bonus. They're over 10, but of course, with a lot of players on this team, foul trouble for individuals, which is not a concern. Goodhouse hot from the line. Smith, eight of nine so far. Excuse me, seven of eight. That one off the mark there. Paris rebound, quick let. Costly turnover there. We're at the two-minute mark now. There comes Humber. Two on three. They'll probably slow it down and pull it back out. There's Paris Boyle squared up. Aldebert here. Correction Curran, rather. Number 41 underneath. Jackie Green had a hand on the ball. I just couldn't get it as Dore has it on the side. Humber does a good job of spreading the floor. Uh, touch foul there. That was quite a weak foul call there. But nonetheless, a foul. 135 remaining. That's a tough one to take for Goodhouse heading into the, the halftime break here. She's going to start the second half now with uh, one, one more foul than she, she really should have. She now has three. And see her first action as well. Number 42, Melissa Jazbeck checking into the game. Goodhouse to three, Chirwati with four. That's the story of this game at this point. If they could play for the rest of the Good house, especially to play the rest of this half and the second half without collecting any more ticky-tack fouls like that last one. They might be able to, to to stay in this game. Kern at the line right now hits the first. She'll have another. And she's good on both. You'll see Heather Kern in uniform for the East All-Stars on January 21st at the OCAA All-Star Games right here at Durham College. Jim Henderson, the head coach of the Humber Hawks tonight, will be coaching the East along with Dwight Jonker, the head coach from Seneca. College is a uh, foe during the season. That's a great thing about the All-Star Game, bringing together the top players in the province. Enemies, or I should say foes, during the season. They have to play hard all the time, 110%. Now they're going to get a chance to be teammates and enjoy the top talent in the province and learn to play together as a team. It's quite interesting how in those games, it's usually quite fun, but if it's a close game towards the end, everybody still wants to win. Sure they do. We look for the scoreboard to light up last year. The West winning 92-88 in a thriller right down to the wire. Look for the East to rebound here this year. Doray with a good fake move to get the open shot, but just rolls off. 
Humber has, excuse me, Durham has possession. You can see with just over a minute to go, can they get a couple of buckets here, maybe to keep it down to 10. One minute remaining, Green hands up, manages to keep it. Goodhouse takes the ball here. We're under a minute now, 50 seconds remaining. In the first half, 37-23, Hawks lead. We just saw Goodhouse out with the possibility of going in for a two-on-one or two-on-two, two, but perhaps under Coach Rainbow's instructions, decided to pull it out. Now it's green, quick hands there by Poulin, checks it away. It'll be Durham ball, 44.5 seconds remaining. In the first half, you're watching OCAA College Action on Rogers Community 10. There's Miller right to the hole, takes it up strong, and she'll lay it in for two. Cindy Miller now with six points on the game. Nice move there, taking it right to the middle. Good job by Miller. She was a bit hesitant, but once she decided, she went for it and made the nice shot. Six points in the game, as you mentioned, Ken. Durham down by 12. I think a goal for them will be get this down to 10 by halftime. Maybe not. Oh, man, that will really put a dent in that, as just as you mentioned there. Jessica Boyle throws in her second three-pointer of the first half, end of the game, 20.1 seconds to go, and it's a 15-point Humber lead. As mentioned, the Hawks rank number seven in the country. And perennially are ranked nationally, an outstanding program they have at Humber College under athletic director Doug Fox. Who is in the crowd this evening. There's Poulin out the back iron. Green with the ball now. Five seconds, it uh, ticks down. There we got a foul, and not a foul, Coach Henderson. One. Unfortunately, not a foul. On the double team there, our official calls is stepping out of, out of bounds. Must stepped out of bounds. We had a pretty good angle. Tough to tell. We were looking for the foul call. 3.1 seconds remaining. Paris inbounds. I think Boyle tries to get it inside here. One second. And the basket goes up. And they count the basket. Replays aren't essential here in OCAA College Hoops. They did count the basket. The bucket goes. The halftime score, number 42 in the column of the Humber Hawks. It's 42. 25 in favor of the Humber Hawks. You're watching OCAA College Basketball action. We're at the half right now. We'll be back with second half action in a moment. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. And we're back a moments away from the second half. Tip off here. It'll be Humber Ball, I'm sure, on the inbounds here. 42 25, the bucket at the end of the first half. Uh, That's called a buzzer beater. I guess it was a buzzer beater or a beater buzzer. We're not sure whether it should have counted or not, but it did officially on the score sheet count. And we're ready to tip off second half action. Janetta Paris to inbounds here for Humber. Keys in the first half was Humber's depth. We talked about it before. They have 10 players who average over five points a game, and they're well on the way to that. Seven players up in four or five points at least. Durham, of course, foul trouble. Four for Chawadi, three for Goodhouse. That's going to be the key in the second half if they want to get back in there. That ball stripped away underneath there by Jackie Green. Durham comes away with it. It'll be Durham ball. We talked about leading scores. Goodhouse leading all scores with 13 for the Durham Lady Lords. And uh, also contributing in the first half, Cindy Miller with six, Heidi Wayne with four, and Matt for Humber. We take a look at the scoring leaders. Scoring leaders, we have eight for Jessica Boyle. She had a couple three-pointers. Seven for Christine Weber. Had a couple nice plays herself. Six for Heather Curran. Also had a couple huge block shots. And Janetta Paris, their leading scorer on the team at over 13 points a game, also a six. As you can see, well balanced. Let's see what happens here. It's been Turn the over. story all season long, Matt. As you mentioned, a balanced scoring attack. They can go to six or seven different people on the bench to score regularly. And that's been Humber's success story so far this year. Jackie Green on the short end there called for the travel violation. Durham needs to cut back into this league quickly. But Humber scores the first basket of the second half. That's Christine Weber. She now has nine points on the game. We actually see at the beginning of the second half, Colleen Chirwadi with four fouls sitting on the bench to start. Key decision for Coach Rainbow here if this game stays close. There's an opportunity to come back when Chirwadi comes back in. Goodhouse tied up there. Durham does get the arrow. 19-point lead. Jackie Green guarded closely by Poulin. Intended pass for Jazbeck picked off there. And back come the Humber Hawks. Nice hands there. Left hand. Poulin tries to lay it in. She gets her own rebound. 
And away come the Lady Lords. We talk about the Durham Lady Lords last year. Coach Rainbow taking his squad from not making the playoffs one year ago all the way to the Final Four just last year. The Final Four championships in London. Coach Rainbow with a 14-20 overall record, but big accomplishment last year taking his team to the Final Four, which is tough to get to. Certainly is. That's their goal again this year, especially to play in front of their home fans. You know, Durham College, as you mentioned, Ken, hosting men's and women's play. A couple opportunities here for Jaspic underneath, but just a couple seconds before that, we saw a textbook way to break the press. When Durham does it that way, they're going to create some scoring opportunities for themselves. Uh, March 3 and 4, as you mentioned, the OCAA men's and women's final four basketball championships are right here. Four games, day one, semifinal action, the championship bronze and gold medal matches on Saturday. And we'll be there, Rogers Community 10, televising the gold medal matches for both men's and women's on Saturday, March the 4th. March Madness is starting to creep around the corner. We're in January, but it's not that far away. That's exactly right. Not too far away. It's going to be exciting, especially with all the great teams we have in the OCAA play this year. Here's Boyle. She'll be at the All-Star Game. Jessica Boyle representing Humber in the three-point shootout contest. That's number 24, Jessica Boyle. And we know she can hit him. She hit two in the first half here today. Here's Jasbeck Green this time, 17-27 remaining in the second half. Heidi Wayne now with the ball here. Telegraph that pass. There's a tendency there to show everybody, including us in the gym, where she's going to pass the ball. She'll learn to pick up on that soon, and she'll become an outstanding passer. So Wayne certainly had one of her better games of the year so far in the first half. That one goes for three there. Christine Weaver with a three-pointer. That's her second. Certainly not afraid to light it up from outside as a Humber offense. Miller, good house, tracks it down. Nice play there. Here's Wayne. Nice pass inside. Jasbeck lays it up and not in. Unfortunately, off the iron. And friendly bounce there and nothing for the Lady Lords. Good job of breaking the press and creating the opportunity for the layup. Jasbeck, as you mentioned, just didn't get the roll. Nice bounce pass there. Turn around. Heather Curran. Doesn't go, finds her own rebound, and uh, might be a foul here. But it's on Goodhouse, it'll be her fourth. And it's not, fortunately, it's not on Goodhouse. Would have been her fourth. Foul goes against number 23, Jackie Green. That'll be Green's first foul. You see Heather Karen there stepping up to the line. Have a chance for two free throws. That's Green's first, also first of the half for the team. Just rolls in and out. Heather Kearns, about a 54% free throw sure on this season. Missed the first one. Can she make the second one? And that one goes there. Does make it, as you mentioned. Jasbeck chases it down. Miller now at the ball. 16-32 remaining. Second half. You're watching OCAA College Basketball action from the Durham College Athletic Complex on Rogers Community 10. Also, don't forget, three times weekly, goal line joining a host of Roger Lajoie, as always, every week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on Rogers Community 10. Community sports at its best and brought to you by the one and only Roger Lajoie. Also, don't forget, live and televised, the broadcast of Oshawa Generals Hockey. Join uh, Dave Gilbert, Roger Lajoie, the broadcast booth, as well as Brian Legree, bringing you the halftime shows. Oshawa Generals Hockey, live on Rogers Community 10. But else again, she's lighted up from the free throw line right now, really burying it now. She has 15 points on the game and really leading the way here, well on her way to her season average, her season league-leading average of 19.4 points per game. Well, we talked about the top of the broadcast was who's going to be the complimentary players. Heidi Wayne having good game. Cindy Miller also having good game. Who else can pick up the slack? Off the mark there. Tipped nicely. Miller there tips it to her teammate Thompson. They come away with it. And the Lady Lords on a bit of a run here. Here's Heidi Wayne. <laughs> Here's Goodhouse. Nice dish inside. Sees Jasbeck. Jasbeck this time can't find the handle again. Two easy buckets there. Just can't find it to go. Tough luck for Melissa Jasbeck. She's getting, doing the right thing. Going to the basket. Looking for that pass. Good one that time from Goodhouse. But just can't get that ball to fall in the hole. Well, that one does go. And that's Heather Curran. She knows how to get the bucket in the hole. Her third point of the second half. She now has nine. There's Wayne again with that one-hand pass. Telegraphing. They picked off several of those. Goodhouse slows it down as they cross the center line. Jump shot there, Miller left wide open, left side, bucket goes. You got a wide open shot like that, about 10 or 12 feet out. 
Miller took the right off right thing, made that shot. She has eight points so far in the game, second on the team to Goodhouse. And it's a good shot sign from Coach Rainbow Squad because she normally averages about two points a game. Tonight she's got eight. That one goes out of play there. We'll find out who it is in a moment. Looks like it'll stay during a ball. 14.58 remaining. you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. The court, perhaps the most valuable at Goodhouse. Julie Goodhouse, I think, is going to pick up a fourth as well. Four at Goodhouse. That'll be fourth and body. Durham is in trouble. 13 32 remaining, two of their key players, both All Stars, both Colleen Chawadi and Julie Goodhouse, will be joining the East All Stars representing Durham College at the 95 All Star East West format. January 21st, right here at the Athletic Complex, Rogers Community 10 will be there. Good House and Chirwadi, however, would like to play in that game with less than four fouls. Both of them on the verge of fouling out. 13-32 to go, a lot of time left. We'll see what uh, Ernie Rainbow uses as a strategy here. Should I go all out, not worry about it, go for, go for the gusto, or should I try and save my key players and maybe bring them back later in the game if we make them run? And off the mark there, Good House battles. Second time we've had a lane violation against Durham, this time with Humber at the line to get a chance to shoot again. At the line here, we take a look at number 32, Dev Henry. She hits that one, gets a second chance, her frame does make it. And as we mentioned, Colleen Chawani checks back into the game, Heidi Wayne going out for a breather. And good to see Chawani back in the line for Durham. Takes a little pressure off Miller and Brown and also Thompson bringing the ball up. Still with a full court press, results in a turnover and a layup for number 14, Carla Bremner. Bremner lays it home, her first bucket of the game. And again, a turnover there, Durham just can't quite click on this press. Humber too quick, too strong. And right now they're showing why they're the number seven ranked team in the country. And undefeated in OCAA play. Goodhouse with the rebound. Even on missed buckets, Humber is pressing. They weren't doing that much in the first half. And now they're maybe trying to put that final nail in the coffin here with 13 minutes to go in the second half. Alder Burt's picked up her first foul of the game. Being a little aggressive. That's coming right to us, Ken. We're going to pass right on us here. It's coming right up on top. I don't, that was too. I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a yellow shirt on here, so I'm not quite sure why they're passing the ball up here. Well, they know you got the good jump shot. Well, I will need more than that right now at this case in the game. 13.09 to go. 57-29. Humber leads here. Durham looking to creep back into this one and score some buckets. At least get some routine going to start the second half off. I think what Durham's going to have to work on, especially we talked about at the beginning, we talked about in the first half, breaking the press. When they do that effectively, they can stay even with this Humber team. When they play sloppy and have bad turnovers, they fall way behind. There's Thompson stealing that one. Quick hands there. She'll bring it up, slow it down, and set up the Lady Lords half-court offense. Shawati left wide open there. Brown right side. They're going to foul reaching in there to go against Lisa Serene, number 11 of Humber. That'll be her third, and it'll be the team's third as well. Humber leads 3-2 in foul situation, second half. In the foul store, of course, the key is not the team fouls, but personal fouls to Goodhouse and Chawati. Durham's two all-stars, both of them saddled with four personal fouls. I think we had a block shot there. 23, Curran Smith with a third of the game. Good defensive job. Really doing a good job. This time Bremner passes inside. Doesn't go in. Henry manages to keep it back to Bremner at the top. Corinne Smith left wide open for two, and uh, Corinne Smith lights it up. We'll see how they break the press. Thompson has it. Swings it back to the other side. Miller a bit slow in breaking this press, and it gives Hubbard an opportunity to bring the double team. To get those quick, crisp passes, they won't have the chance to double team. That bucket's going to go. Goodhouse looks to count it as she signals with her own hand, and it does go. The bucket counts. She'll go to the line for one more. 
She now has 17 on the game. As I mentioned before, bucket by Corinne Smith, just her first bucket of the game. She has two points. She's averaging 9.7 per game on the season. And you can see, as we mentioned, Corinne Smith, third leading scorer on the team. Doesn't really matter with a deep team like Humber if your third leading scorer only has two points. Other people pick up the slack. Goodhouse makes the free throw. Players are standing around like they weren't sure what was if it was one or two shots, but Goodhouse made the bucket and it counted. One shot it was. As mentioned, Goodhouse. Goodhouse does hit it. She completes a three-point play. And also, she is now 10 of 13 from the free throw line. Outstanding so far. She's on the line 13 times. Durham needs some more action like that. Heidi Wayne, I'm sure, will be back in the game soon. Brown, Sherwadi, Thompson, Miller, and Goodhouse for the Lady Lords right now. 11.58 remaining in the second half. Nice pass inside there. Tempted pass to go inside. Seeing your first court action. Tina, if I get this right, Detonio. That's right. See her first action, number 55. The tall center in her first year with the Humber Hawks. So what, what we saw right there, once Thompson got the ball, she has to either dribble or pass very quickly once she gets that return pass. Pass too quickly there. Thompson beats it here. Just beats and it somehow seconds. throws the ball out of bounds there. Unusual turnover. And uh, Goodhouse looks to move back on D here. I think they're worried about the 10-second violation. Once the inbounds the ball, you've got 10 seconds to bring it across half court. Chawadi with a nice steal on the sideline, turning the tables on Humber. There's Miller there. They go to the boards there. Battle hard on the hardwood there. They come up with a jump ball. Nice play by Miller. Brown helping out. Jump ball. All the arrow in favor of Humber in their Navy uniforms. 11.25 remaining. Lisa Cern has the ball at the top of the key. They're setting up their half court. And you can see again, they spread out the floor nicely. D'Antonio off the rim. Doesn't go good house with the rebound and a fresh 30. And here comes Chirwani. <laughs> Defensive pressure by Humber, they're picking up the ball quite high, almost up at the half-court line. Stolen there, number 54, we've seen her all game long. Wendy Aldebert, five points in the first half, runs the floor nicely there. Can't get it to go, Goodhouse is there, hustling back. And she'll slow it down, and here come the Lady Lords once again. We talk about Humber and Durham, the history of their meetings. We'll take a look at that caption in a little while. Durham, eight consecutive meetings have not picked up a win against Humber dating back to 1991. And Shawati right now looking to move inside. Goodhouse can't quite get it up. Brown does. She's fouled and Heidi Brown will go to the line. D'Antonio picking up her first foul and the team's fifth this half. I think as Goodhouse was going to the, to, to the uh, glass right there, she thought she got fouled and she gave up a bit. Didn't go for the rebound, but Heidi Brown did not give up. Grabbed the rebound and as a consequence was fouled by number 55, Tina D'Antonio. Two shots for Brown. And Brown counts the first one. Take a look, as we mentioned here, the last eight meetings at Humber won the last eight consecutive meetings. As you see, the scores, some uh, some rather lopsided scores, nearly going back in the early 90s, 90-91, uh, moving up, especially 119-42, one to forget as well. But certainly the scores of late improved as the program improves. Coach Rainbow seeing his team play with Humber. And you got to remember those years, Humber was always ranked in the national ranking. In fact, one year they were ranked number one in Canada. That was the point I was going to make when we saw those figures before. The improvement, even though they're still losing, the improvement in the, in the Durham games and the whole program. Boyle off the mark, follows her own shot, just about made it, but back on the Lady Lords are approaching the 10-minute mark of the second half. Nice pass, they roll off that one. Good house check there, Bremner is going to take it. It looks like the foul is going to go here against number 14. Or rather, we see it under the basket foul from the other side. It went against Jessica Boyle. Boyle will pick up her second foul. Goodhouse wide open. She lays it in, kisses it off the glass for two. It's an easy bucket for Goodhouse. Summer must have fallen asleep there. Usually they're very tough on that inbounds. She play. now has 20 points in the game, and she is now equal her season average. Five for correction now. We'll take a look at the foul situation. Five is a bad number for Goodhouse. She's still in the game. Chirwadi also with four fouls. We'll see what Chirwadi and Goodhouse can do playing. Ten minutes now. Coach Rainbow, ten minutes to go. Both Goodhouse and Chirwadi. And Coach Rainbow has to have both of them in there right now. Goodhouse, nice steal. She'll take it up strong and lays it in for two. 
22 in the game for Goodhouse. And back come the Humber Hawks. Nine points in the second half for Goodhouse, but uh, we talked about who's going to help out in the second half. Only two for Heidi Brown, two for Cindy Miller. Not much help from the rest of the squad. Chawadi shot out in this game. Excuse me. One point. So, shot out in this game. Heidi went with four points. Strong start to the game, but that's slow as of late, bringing up some slack. Here's Chawadi. Looks back to Wayne again. Wayne, fresh legs after sitting out for a few minutes. There's Wayne inside, takes her man. Nice fake and post up nicely and drops it home for two from 12 feet out. And Heidi Wayne, as we mentioned, hits for that bucket. She now has six on the game. Well, that was a nice move by Wayne, faking one way, coming back, right in the center of the key. That's a good play. That's something that Heidi Wayne can work on more and turn into a pet move and really score a lot of points with. Nice post move there to Antonio, taking it left. Can't get the shot away there to go off. A goal body out of bounds. You see Heidi Wayne shaking her head, nodding. Yes, I knocked the ball out. Good sportsmanship, but also good defensive play. Checking into the game, seeing her first action that we've seen at home here. Number 41, Kathy Stasia, joined the team late in the first half. Has practiced solidly with the team for the last month and a half, seeing her first action at home. As a Durham Lady Laura, number 41, Kathy Stasia. Well, in a situation like this, Durham's actually cut it down up to under 20 points, 19-point lead here, 59-40. But uh, a lot of opportunity for players to get some, some work and work on their moves and work as a team. They had a foul there. Going to the line, and she likes that mark. She quickly goes to that line. Heather Curran, eight points on the game, or nine points, rather, on the game. She'll go to the line to add to that. Heather Curran averaging 7.3 points per game. As we mentioned, she'll be at the All-Star game with the East. And she'll also join two of her teammates. She'll join Janetta Paris and also Corinne Smith. As the East looks to take on the West in the 95 OCAA All-Star game, Saturday, January 21st, at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Game times, as we mentioned, Matt, sorry, game times, as we mentioned, 5.30 for the ladies, 8 o'clock for the men, sandwiched in between the OCAA three-point shootouts at halftimes of both games. And I want to see the mascots. They're going to be here, too. It's going to be a tough decision. There's been a lineup. Mascot mania. There'll be mascots everywhere. Bring your children out. Bring your families out. Tickets are just $3 each. There are limited tickets available at the Control Center here at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Tickets are $3 each. Maximum tickets purchased per person are eight. There are tickets available. They are going quick. And it was a sold-out event one year ago. Take this break out here. We're going to take a look at some other summer sheets and look at the game by game summary of the Lady Lords this season. And you'll see they started off quick. They started off at two and one, and after that they went on a mini uh, losing streak, four game losing streak. They're six and seven overall in the season, including non conference play and tournament action. And uh, right now the Lady Lords in the short end of a 60 41 score, but still eight minutes remaining. Heidi Wayne a little too quick to look after a rebound there. Wayne called on a shooting violation. That's the third time that uh, Durham has had a lane violation on free throws. Heidi Wayne had a good shot. Just a mental mistake, little things like that. It's going to cost Durham, however they have the ball here. I'm not exactly sure why after a lane violation like that. Ah, here's Brown. Nice move inside. Brown gets a shot away. Doesn't go. Stasiuk's there. A sea of gold shirts comes up with, and unfortunately, Janetta Paris comes up with the ball. One on four. I think she was surrounded by gold shirts because she had the ball. And nice bucket inside there. We see Kern's number. We call her off. 11 points in the game for Heather Kern. Here's Miller Wayne this time bringing the ball up. Miller to Brown. A little too far for her. She was, in fact, wasn't expecting it. Miller passing to her back. Two on one with Boyle and Poulin. Boyle off the backboard there. Chased down quickly off the hands of Jackie Dore. Third ball, 740 remaining. Other Rogers Community 10 uh, television action coming up. January 19th, volleyball doubleheader action at the Durham College Athletic Complex. Both games televised as well. The next college action, Rogers Community 10 will be there at the All-Star Games January 21st to keep the action rolling. Rogers Community 10 picking up all the action in the community, and you'll see it right here on Channel 10. Brown, this time Miller, a little too tight with the pass out of bounds there. Durham clicking, they're, they're making the momentum, they're getting the ball where they want to be, but they're just not finishing the plays as, as a result. 
that kind of play where the ball goes off her hands out of bounds. And the reason, as you, you mentioned, too tight. They were just too close together. Good play by Heidi Brown, but if they stay spread out, spreads out the defensive players a bit more. As we see the steal here by Chirwadi again. Uh, here's, they spread out on offense. Here's Goodhouse. As you mentioned, Brown chasing down quickly. Goodhouse gives it up. Chirwadi, nice pass inside. Wayne right there. Can't quite get it to Brown. Nice idea, however. And that's the kind of ball handling Durham will need to continue doing. And they need to continue doing. That's right. It was the right idea. It just didn't play. But Durham has an opportunity to, to cut into this lead. They've played even for the last four or five minutes or so. It's just little spurts there where they turn the ball over too frequently that Humber builds up their lead. Chirwadi with a good rebound, and Jessica Boyle was being a little too aggressive to go for it. She'll be called for her fourth foul. Yeah, Boyle does pick up a foul on that one there. Aggressive play, Chirwadi boxing out solidly there. She'll go to the line now. They're in the bonus situation, one and one. Chihuahua held scoreless so far. You normally second leading scoring team at just over six points a game. We talked about Humber with so many good players scoring five, six, seven, eight points a game. After Julie Goodhouse, Chihuahua is the second leading scorer with six. That's a sign of one of the problems that Durham has had this year. Just not enough depth. Hey, take a moment here. Coach Jim Henderson uh, taking a look at the score there. We had her down for four fouls. We're unofficial, obviously. Some confusion there. They've actually uh, awarded Jessica Boyle her fifth personal which means she uh, fouls out of the game. Boyle exits the game with eight points. 646 remaining, 62-41 Humber leads. You're watching a Rogers Community 10 action on Cable 10 right here. Short 30-second break while they put a substitution in. And we'll come back to action here, and we'll have someone going to the line here to shoot for Durham. One and one, it'll be Colleen Chirwadi. It will be Chirwadi's first opportunity at the line today. She gets Chihuahua at the line here, 62-41, looking to cut into the lead here. That's off the mark there. Goodhouse has her hand on it, chases it down, can't quite run it down on the end line. And it'll be Humber ball here. In this situation, I guess in that timeout, Coach uh, Rainbow told Durham players to press, press, press. They're going to see if they can get a couple quick turnovers. There's Paris, back outside Aldebert, looking for three, decides not to, passes inside, Brown with a good defensive play, and still remains Humber ball, 17 seconds on the shot clock. Good hustle play by Brown to knock it away. There's Dore, Aldebert looking for three, Paris this time, nice pass inside, Heather Curran takes it against Brown, Brown strong D, she'll be... Should be called this one for a foul, but good job by Heidi Brown. Good job by Brown, but also good job by Heather Curran's had a strong second half. Six points in the first half and eight in the second half as she got to the line numerous times, numerous opportunities. You can see why she's going to be an all-star. She's going to be representing Humber and the east part of the OCAA Women's League here Saturday, January 21st. And Curran's good on the first one. And off the mark in the second one. She does have 12 points on the game, however. Heather Curran. There's Chihuahua looking for Goodhouse. Had her for a moment. Missed it. Here's Brown and the key wind up. Unlucky there at the back rim. Goodhouse goes to the floor hustling there. Nice play. However, Paris manages to come up with a nice hustle by Goodhouse. Lady Lords hustle back. Paris lets it fly off the glass. It goes there. Uh, big pocket for Janetta Paris. She's leading the, the Hawks right now. 13.1 points per game. An interesting looking shot on that one, but it counts and goes in. She's got eight on the game. Somehow the House League uh, Sandlot rule is you have to call those. He's on Sandlot rules. He's also double-A rules. If it goes in, it counts. It counts. Right you are. The scoreboard lights up. 65-41-5. 35 remaining at a timeout on the floor. Durham calls timeout. You're watching OCAA College Action on Rogers Community 10.
please call the Rogers Response Line at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our program are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500. See Coach Rainbow here again, Matt, as always, at Shock Talk here at Sportaires. Girls tired right now. They played hard. They played hard against the number seven team in the country. 65-41. Not a bad showing for the Lady Lords by no far, especially the first game off the hop, second half, getting back into the system. The season split into two halves, obviously with the Christmas break. And Coach Rainbow has to be somewhat pleased with the output and the current performance of his Lady Lords tonight. That's right, they're playing the number seven team in the country, number one in the OCAA. And as you can see, Humber is deservedly that those uh, rankings. They average a margin of victory 38 points thus far. Durham only trailing by 24 in this game. So with regard to Humber's normal games, they're doing a pretty good job. Here's Pula and Chirwadi one-on-one. -on -one. Nicely guarded there by Chirwadi. 5.28 remaining second half. This time Curran tips it back out. Aldebert. Paris just inside three-point range, off the mark. Wayne rebound. Good, re good rebound by Wayne, going high there. And she's at her best when she's pounding on the boards. That's Heidi Wayne. Heidi Wayne, a native of Ravenhurst, Ontario. Here's Wayne again, pulling on her. Miller couldn't handle the pass. Checked there by... Uh, Defender Andre Dory there. In fact, call out on Dory. Jackie Dory, rather. Tipped away there. Poulin takes it away from Wayne. She's got a break. She takes it home and lays it in for two. We're under five minutes now. Wayne that time at her pocket pick. Superb job by Poulin with a big steal. First point to the second half. Six on the game. There's Wayne. Good house. Loaded closely there by Poulin. No foul called there. Here's Aldebert. Takes it up strong. And we got a block there. It's going to be against Heidi Wayne. Heidi Wayne will be called with a third team foul. Third, excuse me, third personal foul. Take a look at the Lords. This year, Lady Lords, rather, uh, their season so far off to a good start. Lost their season opener to Humber, in fact, 66-42. Two consecutive wins, especially one in overtime down in Kingston against SLC. Close game there. And then uh, we talk about four games in a row on the short end of the stick, especially two big games against uh, Seneca, as we talked about, and also against Niagara. Those are teams that Durham will be battling as we get down to the wire here in the second half. But four games, three of those were on the road. It's a tough road to hoe there for Durham. Back to action here. Paris inside does get it to Kern. They tie it up, and Heidi Brown got her mitts on it there to tie it up for the jump. And possession error in favor of Durham. Miller's having a seat. 4-10 to go here in the second half. Pressure still on from Humber. 67-41. Not as easy a game as the Humber Hawks might have thought. Current inside. She doesn't miss any of those buckets from that range. She hits for two. Almost another turnover there. I think Humber's applying a slightly different type of, pr of pressure here. This time Shawadi Goodhouse breaks it. Brown's open. Goodhouse sees her open under the basket and Heidi Brown finishes it off. Good job by Goodhouse there to look up and see the open player under the bucket. Heidi Brown now with six points in this game. There's Paris, 20 on the shot clock. They look inside Kern, the go-to gal there. Turn, jumps, foul, called on the play. That's going to go against Heidi Brown. That's two shots in this play, 69-43, three minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the second half. And the Kern just uh, be able to pitch a tent down there in the low post area and fouled so many times and just ends up walking a couple steps with the ball's dead and shooting so many free throws here in the second half. What a tremendous player. We mentioned before she's an all-star and you can certainly see why. Curran well above her season single game average. Misses that one. One of two. She has nine points in the second half and 15 on the game. Here comes Delinda Thompson. 
Brown, nice hands there. Looks inside, tipped away by Aldebert. Shawadi with it, 15 on the shot clock. Aldebert came right behind like that, and Heidi Brown didn't even realize teammates have got to call out to, to help them to protect the ball. Here's Thompson, this time Wayne, one-on-one, -on -one. checked away nicely, Poulin, quick hands, that's twice she's taken the ball away from Wayne. Nice job coming to the center of the court there. Poulin, uh, nice move there. Off to Aldebert, she lays it in for two. Aldebert with seven on the game. And right now, Humber in control here, under three minutes to go, 72-43. That ball is going to go out of bounds. They chase it down, it'll be Humber ball. We mentioned before, Corinne Smith, third leading scorer in this team. Only two points in this game. Alderbert, second leading scorer in this team, has only scored two points here in the second half. And Humber's increased their lead significantly. So you can see a good job. They had the current really picking up the slack there. Substitutions here, back in the game for Humber. We see number 32. Deb Henry back in, 42 for Humber. She's had a solid game as well. Christine Weber, she has 12 points in the game. And their tall, lanky center, D'Antonio, back in number 55. D'Antonio double team down low. Brown has a piece of it there. Jump ball. And that arrow, if I'm not mistaken, will be Humber ball. Her arrow switches on the inbounds. 242 remaining second half. Good job by Brown to tie the low post player, D'Antonio. That's a just a strong defensive play. Lots of traffic underneath, not much doing there for Humber players. Bremner turns, jumps, shot off the mark, and Heidi Brown comes up with it. Stolen there. And a wake up Humber. Brown, quick on D, back, always known for a defensive play, a strong defensive play in the OCAA one year ago. A welcome addition for Coach Rainbow back in the lineup. Oh, uh, let down on the boards there. Wayne let her man get away. Thompson not boxing out. And the ball will go to Humber for two shots at the line. 2.06 remaining. Humber well in hand here. Heidi Wayne's picked up three quick fouls here in the second half. She's got four. Interesting how good house is four and Chihuahua with four. I've played very smartly. They haven't picked up that fifth foul. Perhaps also they're not being as aggressive and the reason why they're down by 30 points. And Bremner just doesn't get the roll there. However, loose ball is going to be battled for. It'll stay Humber ball. Unlucky for Heidi Brown there. Hustle after it. And it's a 30-point Humber lead. 2.04 remaining. Stay tuned for the second half of today's doubleheader. We'll feature the number one ranked team in the country, the Humber Hawks from Etobicoke, and the number eight ranked team in the country, the Durham Lords. And Augusto Duquesne and the rest of the Durham Lords are fired up for this one to start the second half off. They finish second, losing a tight one, a last minute loss to Jordan College from Flint, Michigan at the George Brown Metro Classic. They're ready to start the second half, this non conference game against Humber. What a battle, number one and number eight in the country. It's not very often two nationally ranked teams get to play, let alone during the season. Two of the top ten teams, two of the top eight teams in Canada, perhaps the two, probably the two top teams in Ontario. Stick around for that. It should be a great matchup. We also had national rankings wise Algonquin College from the nation's capital, ranked number seven in the country. Three of the top eight teams in the country play in the OCAA. They're going to foul there, and that will be Julie Goodhouse's fifth foul, which means she'll be checking out of the game. She does check out of the game, however, with 22 points. Solid effort for Goodhouse. She exits with 147 remaining, and into the game to replace her is number 42, Melissa Jasbeck. Had a good look at Goodhouse there, just on the bench. She had a good game personally, individually, 22 points, but above her season average. But if the team's down this much, a bit disappointing. Deb Henry going to the line for the second time today. One of two. Now one of three. There. Nice shield and block out there by Melissa Jasbeck. Thompson with the ball. Back to Chihuahua. 142 remaining in the game. There's Brown. Nice fake move. Takes D'Antonio to the basket. D'Antonio still with a still with a piece of block on that one. With a long reach when you're, about, you're over six feet tall. 6-1 D'Antonio. She's able to get the ball from a distance. Uh, nice play there. Wayne looking for a new five-second uh, restart there. And here's Wayne, 134 remaining. Thompson swing it again. Here's Brown. Woo! 
Thompson, nice pass inside Brown. This time Wayne steps around, lays it up, can't get it to go, follows her shot, but a Humber comes away. Good job by Wayne, just couldn't get the, the right angle on that shot. That will go, as we mentioned, coming up next in our double hitter action today, the Humber Hawks, number one in the country against Durham, number eight in the country, Steve McGregor, an all-Canadian tournament selection one year ago at the National Championships, and Mike Cates, four-time defending OCAA champion, Humber calls the national champions in college basketball in the country three years in a row, 91, 92, and 93. That one goes for three there. That just adds to the score. We're under a minute now, 56 seconds remaining. Durham will inbound. We also talk about an ironic story here. Rick Delina, who coached the Humber Hawks to an upset victory one year ago over Algonquin College, 72-70, has also stayed with the program and stayed with his good friend Mike Cates. Mike Cates back from the national team. Mike Cates, as we all know, an assistant coach under Ken Shields for Team Canada at the World Basketball Championships this past year in Toronto. Yes, we know he took his one-year sabbatical, and I think uh, Rick Delina coached the most successful last year. Knew that his, uh, his friend Cates, Mike Cates, was coming back. So no uh, concerns there, no pressure. Inbounds here, trouble getting the ball in bounds. 42 seconds remaining. Wayne to inbounds here. Even with less than a minute to go and over a 30-point lead, Humber's still pressing the ball, still looking for turnovers. A two-shot foul coming up here. Heidi Brown to go to the line, number five. She's certainly made an impact in her first game back and saw a lot of minutes tonight. She's played well over 30 minutes in this contest. Heidi Brown is certainly showing no lack of concentration, no lack of stamina in her first game back with the Lady Lords. She'll be a valuable contribution as the rest of the season goes on. This was a tough match for Humber. We knew against Humber. We knew that going in. But as the rest of the season goes on, they, they play some of the the lower ranked teams in the OCAA, that's when players like Heidi Brown are going to really contribute. And with a couple key wins, Dumber Durham can get right back in the playoff hunt. And Brown hits that. Clock ticks down 30 seconds. Uh, Heidi Brown as well, a uh, hometown Janetville, a graduate of IE Weldon High School in Lindsay. That ball goes away there. 20 seconds, they battle for the bucket goes with Deb Henry. Here's Thompson. Ed Mads at Brown once again on the receiving end. 13 seconds remaining. Here's Wayne. Dishes off Truwadi. Nine seconds. Jazbeck turnaround jumper doesn't go. It'll go out of bounds. 4.2 seconds. Durham players here still being aggressive, still looking for opportunity. Two seconds, one second. Chirwadi for three, hits it. And at the buzzer, Chirwadi does drain for three. Changes the scoreboard by a little bit. The final score, the Humber Hawks 78. The Durham Lady Lords 47. They were in the game, most of the game. However, a tough battle at the hands of the number seven ranked team in the country. The Lady Lords fall to two and six. They've ended up to climb now to move into that six and final playoff spot. They're currently seven. Humber continues undefeated. Matt at 8 0, and we've seen a, an excellent basketball start to the second half. Look for the Lady Lords to improve and push for that final playoff spot. You see Coach Rainbow there. I think he realized he perhaps was in over his head against a, such a strong team as Humber, such as a balanced team as Humber. Foul trouble was part of the problem here for Durham. The turnovers was one of the key problems, and they just couldn't handle the Humber pressure both in the first half and in the second half. Well, we take a look, as always, we summarize right now the Rogers Community 10 at TSN, the Sports Network player of the game for the Durham Lady Lords. And this game, it goes to none other than first-year forward from Gravenhurst, Ontario, and that's Heidi Wayne. Heidi Wayne lights it up for 11 points in this game, including eight rebounds. Heidi Wayne, today's Rogers Community 10, TSN, the Sports Network player of the game. And Matt, your final, I guess your final thoughts on this game. We'll look forward to the second game of our doubleheader, but closing comments on today's first game. Well, Hubber nationally ranked team, ranked number seven and first in the OCAA. We can see why Durham had some, we saw some good key plays in there, but they just couldn't have that consistent, strong play that Coach Ernie Rainbow would like. I think if he gets that, Durham will win a couple games later in the season and be battling for those playoffs. Well, a special thanks to all the Rogers crew. We'll be off for a short break right now, but don't go away. We'll be back with the second game of our today's doubleheader on Rogers Community 10 College Basketball Action. We're coming at you in a moment. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about your community channel, Rogers Community 10, please call the Rogers Response Line 
at 436-3500. That's 436-3500. Your comments and suggestions regarding our programming are greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your name and phone number. That's the Rogers Response Line, 436-3500.